go ahead and start off where we left off. <laughs> Got done just doing the uh, front end on this guy. So uh, reverse the eye on the front spring on both sides. Also went ahead and uh, put on the late 26.7 spindles. Now we have to work on the firewall and the steering. All that kind of works in conjunction with itself. If you remember, the steering was messed up. It's even more messed up once I completely tore apart that steering gear assembly. I'll have to show you that. They welded this uh, to there. And this is what it looks like. And it's a stock setup. Um, so basically, it's just being held by those little tiny teeth. It's terrible. I mean, it's not like that big a deal. It's uh, it's only your steering, right? So I went ahead and I reused the mask jacket. I had another steering gear assembly out of uh, another car, just old used one. I went ahead and restored it. So that steering gear assembly is now in the car. I kind of got it mocked up how I want it to sit. We're gonna end up using the firewall and the stock Ford steering assembly, uh, just as it was in, intended. Now the steering column, uh, like the mast jacket, is a stock Ford mast jacket, but it's been extended six inches in order to reach the firewall, which is perfect, because I don't have to then you know, basically manufacture a new mast jacket like I originally intended on doing. Once I tore it all apart and I cleaned the old one, I could salvage some parts and uh, make a complete unit. So this should be, yes, taking a step back in technology, but reliability is the important thing here and safety. Um, so the way that the Ford steering column works is that the steering gear is actually up at the top of the steering gear, uh, where all modern cars, the steering gear is down at the bottom. Uh, and so you end up having to have a very strong structural uh, like frame component in order to take all the twists and the, and the torque that's being taken. Where with the Ford steering gear, the firewall takes all of the torque, the body takes all the steering component torque, and it's all transferred through the steering column. Kind of obscure and weird, but that's how it works, and it works surprisingly well. Uh, so we're just gonna go with that because it is tried true and frankly, safer in this case. All right, pardon the mess here because there's a lot of it. Uh, basically, it's a mess. But what we're gonna work on is the firewall. Here is the replacement firewall. We're getting rid of the wood firewall to go with the steel firewall. Um, in order to uh, clear the cylinder head, we're gonna have to basically cut this section of uh, firewall out. We also have to move, this is the steering gear mount. We're gonna move the steering gear mount two and a half inches down into this position, and then we will fill this back in. So I've got it, the steering gear uh, case, basically the mounting, uh, etched or awled into this firewall. I've got the new bolt location marked, so I'll be drilling a hole, using the bolt hole to recenter it, cutting out and welding that back in. Uh, for here, I'm gonna be using a 31 Model A Cabriolet panel underneath the seat. Uh, that's not a mouthful, I don't know what it is. So, this is it. Uh, what's super cool about it is it's, it's, got, it's got a beautiful, beautiful dish to it. Plus, it's even embossed, so it matches a lot of the embossing that is already on the firewall. Uh, so I'll be cutting out the firewall, basically only using half of this, if, if at all, maybe basically from this line up to here. As I said before, I'm gonna be taking, we're just gonna start by cutting out the steering gear mount, and I need to basically locate the steering gear mount in relationship to where the steering gear is actually sitting. And to do that, I have measured out the steering gear location on the, on the car, and I'm now transferring that information, or I have already transferred that information to the firewall. So I need to drill a pilot hole, which is then gonna give me a place to basically locate the rest of this steering gear assembly. Make sense? Good, glad you're on board. All right, so this piece now comes out and it has to be moved down to that location or thereabouts. So, 
Uh, what I'm gonna do now is I've got this marked. I'll cut out this section and tack this into place. And uh, then I'll build a filler piece for here to take that up. So this bracket here actually has to be kicked at an angle to correct the changed angle of the steering column. So I'm gonna be kicking it out, so I'll just tack it at the bottom, then I gotta build some, uh, basically a spacer plate of some sort to, or a filler panel to speak of, that'll take up the, uh, the difference that this has been kicked out. Then we'll go ahead and just test fit the firewall onto the body, uh, and just make sure everything lines up like it's supposed to. Hey, there's the uh, basically the steering column bracket. You can see how it. Uh, well, let's try that side. You can see how it is angled there to make up the difference that the uh, angle changed from stock. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and test fit this. Before I do that, I do need to cut out this section so this will clear the cylinder head. Firewall installed. Here's the cutout just to clear that cylinder head. And then uh, we've got the re angled bracket. I think it looks pretty clean. It's going to be really tight in this corner here for, the, uh, for that manifold stud. I'm trying to figure out just where everything fits and, uh, whew, man, am I hot, <laughs> how everything fits and uh, how everything's going to go together. So, with that being said, Let's uh, try to fit that steering column in place and see how well all that lines up. See if my mathematicians are all making sense. Okay. Well, I forgot about that. We need to make a uh, round hole fit into a square peg. It's easy to sometimes uh, uh, not see the error of your ways, and I wasn't thinking. So we've got a, uh, a round flange that I just turned into a square hole. I actually uh, did scribe out a round flange on the, uh, on the metal there, but I was like, nah, I don't need to worry about that. Well, guess what? I do. See, I got it, got it squared off there and it's rounded back in there. We'll chuck this thing up and uh, cut off the ends of the steering column there, make it more like a 26.7. We don't really need those huge flanges on there anyway it'll be supported without them. But here we are all lined up. Uh, everything's kind of tacked in place. So I've got to make the filler piece to cover this hole. Um, I've got that patch panel that I'll be putting in here to cover that. So it's uh, basically like a uh, little jigsaw puzzle now. I just kind of start welding and tacking and welding and tacking until all the pieces come together and uh, kind of solidify this um, this firewall. It is amazing though, just like this body is all wiggly and even though the firewall isn't attached to the sheet metal of the body any, it's amazing just how much uh, stiffer that body becomes. But uh, anyway, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, tear this thing apart now that I know that everything fits dry. All right, well, I've got this guy all manufactured up. You can see the boom, little bump out. So that's gonna change the angle because I have changed the angle of the steering gear and uh, make everything line up as it should. So now I can go on to filling that guy in. Oh, a lot of friggin' work, I'll tell you that. That's too bad, the battery on the mic just died, so bleh. All right, so like I said, uh, it's been tacked just to hold it in place, so now we're just gonna go ahead and test fit it. Um, I will kind of have to hammer form these corners in so that they fill that hole, which shouldn't be uh, the most impossible thing to do. Uh, but other than that, it's just a lot of stretching, welding, grinding. You know what they say, a, uh, a grinder can make a welder out of anybody. So uh, that's what we're going on. Let's make 
sure the valve cover fits, which I'm sure it will. Voila, look at all that room. Huh. Well, I appreciate everybody following along. Now they got the firewall welded up. I'm gonna finish cleaning it up, get it sandblasted, painted. Know that the valve cover fits with no issues. Uh, good day. So with that being said, if you have any questions about this build or just are curious about anything that is Model T related, uh, I'll try my best to answer them. Just ask down in the comments and uh, do me a favor. It really helps out these videos. Let's other people who are interested in these cars uh, know about them. So give this video a like, a thumbs up. And if you wanna know when I post another video, just hit the uh, notification in the corner there and that way you'll be ready to go. So I appreciate it. Have a good one and uh, we'll see you next time.